So, um, last time we, we went into the how we breathe in the womb and what it's like to be in the womb. And it was just a general way, which is a good way to start because people just visualize it as their image which isn't normally accurate to what what is happening. Now, I've been teaching quite a lot over Skype and I've just been actually going directly to how I see it. So people haven't done a, just talking them into the woman, it's just their, their view. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna teach you a bit of the anatomy of the placenta. And this is very relevant to anybody, or for me, I think it's very relevant to anybody doing healing work or becoming aware of their own space and their boundaries. And, and their aura and how their energies are interrelating or not interrelating with other people as you become more refined and move along the spiritual path more aware of your energy fields you start noticing how it affects you being around other people or being around crowds and you have to start, generally, people have to start finding ways of how to be with that. And a lot of it is how people's auras are interacting with other people's auras and they're finding out, oh, how do I clear this? How do I stop this happening? That you're picking up all sorts of different things or or imagining picking up different things or actually picking up things or becoming aware of different energies and you may notice with one person it's really easy with other people you may feel they can be a long way away but you feel invaded somehow um, and that this is so this is for me is initiated in in the womb um, and when we do it when I just allow people to have their own image of what it is like in the womb um, uh, it, it is generally not accurate generally the be the the memory of it they don't know really accurately what is themselves and what is the mother. Does the umbilical cord belong to the baby or does it belong to the mother? Does the placenta belong to the baby or does it belong to the mother? Does the sac that you're in belong to the baby? Does it belong to the mother? So quite often when people, certainly before I knew the anatomy of it, when I experienced my image or went back to that, I wasn't sure. I just knew that I was being fed through the umbilical cord. And I didn't know whether it was actually my blood in the umbilical cord or whether it was my mother's blood in the umbilical cord. So you're not sure where the parameters are um, but in fact the blood in the umbilical cord is from the baby the baby's heart is pumping the blood in the umbilical cord the blood in the placenta is of the baby coming it's connected to the baby's heart the blood in the whole sack around you is from the, or the inner layer of that sack is 
from the baby's blood supply. The fluid in the sac is from the baby. So in a way, it's not your straight away interfaced with the mother and the energies of the mother. It's a bit like you've got a room. You've got your own space that is actually you. I know that the mother's energies will just be flowing in and out of that and your energies will be flowing the other way in and out of that. But if you think about it, that's you're in an egg and it's your own egg. We don't think of ourselves as being born from an egg, but in a way, in the womb, we are part of an egg that's actually growing with us. And it gives a, a space where we can be aware of our aura, that the aura can expand out in, in the fluid. I, I don't really know the names, I, I wrote them down, I took to look at the pictures and then I just, I know, dyslexic, I think it's, am, am, I can't um, remember. Amniotic fluid. An amniotic fluid, yeah, and the amion is the, I think the outer edge mm -hmm. of the, the first bag, the, the two bags. Um, So th that is our first interface and again as I said with breastfeeding at that stage the intellect is not there so we're functioning in a completely different way and we're not building up these intellectual patterns that say oh I don't like this and this means this and that means that you are just with the energies of the mother and you're not making decisions or I can't remember the word you're not uh, yeah you're not making a frame intellectual framework of the different things you're just in in the flow of it much more as I said with the uh, astrocyte cell type experience and the neuron type even though that's all there it is this universal energies and then behind the experience of the mother we're also going to see how we connect to creation from that um, now when we were looking at the brain and we were working with the before we, who knows the anatomy of the placenta to some extent a little bit a little bit okay when, when we were working with the brain and particularly the ventricles i said of the the third ventricle uh, and generally the ventricles uh, as an overall thing they were very similar in the ex as the experience of being in the womb and the connection to creation and um, it wasn't a bright light in the when I experienced the uh, experience it, especially in the third ventricle it wasn't an experience of a bright light at all it's a, a dark creation that they experienced me there. Now here we have a picture from then of the ventricles, the lateral ventricles, the third ventricle, the fourth ventricle, and then what I call the fifth ventricle, the going down the center of the spine. Now a lot of people look at this picture and it's got the thalamus, the cerebellum, the brain stem as part of it. A lot of people look at this and say it's very similar to the female genitalia or they see a pregnant woman in the picture or they see a very female quality to it. So there's a lot of similarities between 
the ventricular system for me uh, and also the, the uterus. Now, I don't know if you can remember this, this is the fluid coming into the ventricles from the blood. So how it works in the placenta, if you think of this as the blood flow in the mother and in, in the uh, lining, of, well it's actually, it start, makes again, I can't remember the name, but you, where it's joining to the placenta you have the the uh, capillaries, the venous capillaries and the arterial capillaries and it works in the same way. The, the blood from the, um, the, the, the arterial capillaries just come out into a space in the same way as it does in the choroid plexus. It just the, the blood from the, the, the capillaries can come out into this place where it all just mixes. And then the venous blood is taking the flow back to the heart. And blood can come from the arterial capillaries and just go straight back out through the venous ones. And the similar thing happens in the placenta in that the venous blood vessels are there, the, the arterial blood vessels are there, and they just open, So, and it's called maternal blood. And it can just come out of a, 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 an artery, a, 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 an arterial capillary, and then just go back in through, through a venous one, but it basically opens up into a space. Now what happens in the ventricles or the choroid plexus there's this layer and the capillaries move around it so it's covering a large area and what is need this acts as a filter and what is needed for in the ventricles can come through the filter and what is not cannot and also any toxins or any carbon dioxide that comes into the ventricles comes out so it works both ways the choroid plexus works both ways now it is exactly the same in the placenta this side I think of as the baby because it's going to have the baby's blood supply in it and this side I think as the mother and they don't join together the mother's capillaries are not joining with the capillaries in the placenta or in the umbilical cord they're completely separate the maternal milk comes out into this area and then there's a line of two it's actually two cells thick one of the mother and one of the baby and then in a way that filters what is you is for and then this isn't written anywhere I just presume to me that filters what allows through what is necessary for the baby and this happens on all sorts of levels like mothers getting all these urges to eat coal and all sorts of different things because they feel the baby needs it and cells are intelligent they allow through oxygen allow through all the different ingredients that the baby needs to eat and takes back carbon dioxide and takes back all of the, the waste that is being produced as the baby evolves but the blood supplies do not connect so there's a very definite thing that you can call baby and a very definite thing you can call yourself And then the baby's blood supply does a very similar thing. It, they, in the placenta, in the ba now the baby ba baby part is the placenta. Now what happens is you get the blood supply there and they make all of these little trees that open up into lots of branches and they're coming down into these or making these. And it's got a similar name, it's called something villa. A cop Coron villa rather than choroid plexus, it's coron villa. Um, 
so their surface area is big and the the now it's the other way round in the baby which we'll talk about in a bit the actual what is the in the rest of the body what is a vein is called an archery because it is actually full of all the carbon dioxide and things that need to go to the mother but it's coming from the baby's heart it's coming out from the baby's heart which so it's an, an archery but it's full of all the things it's full of the carbon dioxide and the waste that's going to go back to the mother so the archeries are coming in but they're full of carbon dioxide full of the the the, the waste products and they're led out and that goes through the membranes and the mother's veins will take that away and then what are called the veins will absorb the nutrients and the oxygen and that will come back through the umbilical cord to the heart in the baby and then be pumped around the whole body in the baby so there's something that can be called baby and something that can be called mother because it's part of the baby's circulation and to start off with when the baby is very first evolving in the womb the placenta completely surrounds the whole baby because it's tiny so it's placenta all the way around and that's connected to the the the, the um, whatever they're called these little tiny capillaries in the mother coming out of the the womb and um, then as the baby and its sac grows then part of the the, the the placenta moves around so after that maybe about a third to the half of the sac is placenta and where the umbilical cord comes out of the baby and then joins to the placenta there it's thick there all of these capillaries that are making up the placenta that's thick and it gets finer and fine rather than quite people think of it as a brick or something but it's not it's slowly tapering out till it makes the outside of the sac around so the whole sac is still the placenta but it's just really fine and on the inside of the sac it is all of these capillaries and the connective tissue between the capillaries and then in the middle of the sac it's these dividing cells and then on the outside of the sac it's the same thing from the mother it's what would be the the capillaries and connective tissue so that the, the the dividing cells it doesn't break anywhere it goes around all of these millions of little trees as one sheet and continues around the whole of this sac that you're in and the fluid there's there's two light there's a, a a thin lining the fluid is coming out of the baby it's from the skin of the baby and it's a bit like the lymph going back in a way it is going back through the blood supply back to the placenta but also the carbon dioxide skin uh, toxins are coming out through the skin of the baby and fluid and making the whatever it's called fluid which to start off with is, is clear and then you have a fine called the amio what, and whatever membrane and then there's some more fluid which I think is just similar and then you've got the, the thicker bag but you've got your own space in there and you've got room for your aura to open up into that space rather than it being you and then you and your mother and your energy just dispersing 
directly from your body to your mother. Suddenly you've got a space you can call your own. Which in the reality of it, when you go back to that experience, makes a big difference. Makes a very big difference. It means you, you've got a space where you can just be. It's like you've got your own little room. And that fill that bag that grows. So it fills out the, 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 the uterus and it's the bag that's growing with the baby inside of it. So it fills the whole of the uterus. And the, the, the placenta can easily be half of that bag. And you can think of the placenta as being the whole of that bag. It's just not acting, you know, once it becomes a membrane, it's just not acting in the same way, but it's the, the same material just spreads around the whole thing. And the pumping of the heart, what we normally think of when the heart is pumping. Now you can just go onto YouTube or look at this all online to look at pictures of it. I've got some very good anatomy books that I look at it, but I know this there's some good YouTube videos. So you can go into this in more depth and actually learn the right words <laughs> for everything as well. Um, but what we experience is where the blood being pumped out through the body. The, for me, once you get in contact with it, the actual initial thing isn't like, oh, we're receiving nutrition through the umbilical cord. The initial thing is actually the blood is being pumped out. And then the blood with the nutrition is being pushed back in by that blood being pushed out. The, impetus from is from the heart pushing it out and the actual arterial blood is actually like the venous blood it's coming back so the the i'm going to call it venous blood even though it's got now the oxygen and nutrients that comes through the umbilical cord goes to the liver first as a large vein to the liver and some of it goes into the liver, but it branches at that point, and the, then the rest goes to the heart. And an interesting thing that happens, um, you've got the left, what's it called, atrium. Normally the venous blood is coming into the left atrium, then into the left ventricle, and then is pumped around the lungs, comes back to the right atrium, and then is pumped around the body from the right, sorry, comes to did I say it's that it comes in the right mm. side and then leaves through the left side so whatever I said before it's arriving on the right hand and leaving on the left side now the capillaries in the lungs at this stage are really small so not much blood can go through there and what happens is some of the blood moves from the right atrium directly into the left atrium and then is pumped out some of the blood also that is pumped towards the lungs which have a lot of pressure in them from the right ventricle actually passes directly into the aorta leaving so normally when the blood is pumped around the body it's normally all coming from the when we're babies before we're not after we're in the womb not before we're in the womb is being pumped out by the left hand side of the body. Now, if you think of it, the, the placenta, when you look at it in this way, and the umbilical cord is kind of almost the same size as the baby. It may be a bit smaller, but not that much more. There's a lot more work got to be done by the heart because it's not just pumping it around the baby's body, it's pumping it around the whole of this um, thing. So it's both sides of the heart in this particular thing are pumping the blood out and the blood will come down the aorta some will split off and go around the whole body and then as it splits to go out through the legs two of those are what, what are arteries come out and they make the arteries there's two arteries going down the umbilical cord carrying all carrying the the the, the 
kind of calm dioxide and different things even though it will have a lot of oxygen and stuff because it has just come from the heart out and then one large one coming back now this may all sound quite complicated so it really is worthwhile looking at something on youtube but just to give people a proper image of what's happening there so it makes a visualization more real to what is actually happening the same in cranial work where you learn properly the anatomy of something so you know what you're palpating when you're working with somebody and the anatomy is the sacred geometry of the body so I hope, did people understand what I was talking about so you've got you as the baby you've got the umbilical cord coming out you're surrounded by this whatever fluid it's called this starts off I don't know. <laughs> this is going to add to the uh, visualization or not um, it starts off as like lymph in a way leaving through the baby's skin and probably through the lungs and making its way back and then into the mother after about 12 weeks the kidneys start functioning and working in the body and the urinary system and then after that it is like the lymph but it's also urine it's a combination of both so you're, you're bathed in your own urine I think it's and it, it actually works to combat illnesses and bacteria it will kill any bacteria there at all but it's not like we're eating food and different things that there's quite a lot of toxins to come out of in the womb you're just getting blood and filtered blood at that which hasn't got so it's not like it's going to normal urine it's going to be quite refined urine but that that makes your room there you bathe it in pee <laughs> and so and then the whole inside of it and all the blood supply of the whole inside of it and the placenta that's your blood then the mother's blood is something different and they don't and that makes kind of a boundary there's a physical boundary and there's a bit of an energetic boundary as well in that and in the visualization like when the visualization when i you said last time when i mentioned the placenta it made it a lot easier for you so um, for me it makes it a lot easier and again the same with suckling we have created or we've had you know that the, you've been born and then all of these different things start happening you know the mum, you need, mother needs to tell you to do things and then you get whatever happens at that level when you're in the womb none of that has happened so it may not necessarily be the same relationship as you think it is energetically you may actually get on quite well and there may also be past life things that you've come into to say you know a friend or a parent or a baby from a past life so there, there's all of that but there is this experience of being there the experience of having your own room, the experience of being with the mother, but then again we're taking it back and you're very close to it at that stage, this initial energy of creation. So in holographic breathing, there's a, a gentle motion of the jaw. Jaw opens on the in-breath, closes on the out-breath, and it's a small motion. And people find their own amount, and it varies over a period of time. But it's not big, maybe three or four millimeters, <coughs> quarter of an inch, sometimes less. 
And on the same time as you're doing that, the lips are closed all of the time and the upper surface of the tongue is on the roof of the mouth and as much as feels comfortable. And um, quite often when people are learning and a bit later, people are used to opening the jaw and the lips open at the same time. So, so the lips open or they open the jaw and the tongue comes off the roof of the mouth. Um, but there's an innate ability, uh, probably from suckling, that the lips can stay sealed, not tense, in a relaxed way, that they can stay closed in a relaxed way and the jaw can move, and the tongue can have a relaxed and soft seal to the roof of the mouth. As, as the jaw moves. I'll just demonstrate so people can see that there it really is a very subtle movement of the jaw. So I'll just do just for a, a few moments. So Uh, and very quickly drop into an alternative state, kind of a shamanistic, very relaxed place. So we're, we're going to go through some exercises, but this time with our eyes open. First of all, to get that seal on the lips. Notice you can kind of purse your lips. You can, you know, it goes in here. And the lips stay closed. Try that a few times, you drop the jaw and the lips stay closed. And now also put the tongue on the roof of the mouth and pull the jaw down. And notice it's like you get a suction with the tongue as the jaw drops down. So it, it, you can make a seal and that is very similar to what babies do. Their lips seal around the nipple in a relaxed way and the tongue seals the nipple to the roof of the mouth. So we can make a, a seal with natural ability to make a seal. But now doing that in a very relaxed way with a much smaller motion of the jaw. So the lips are relaxed with a light seal. The flat of the tongue on the roof of the mouth with a very relaxed seal. And now just in a small, small way or however big, opening the jaw the lips stay sealed, the tongue stays on the roof of the mouth, the jaw closes, the lips stay sealed, the tongue stays on the roof of the mouth. Now make that movement a bit smaller. And now it's a bit like a pump. Notice as you're opening the jaw, it's natural to breathe in through your nose. As your jaw drops down, it's like a little pump. It brings the air in through the nose. Then as the jaw rises, it's like a pump. The breath comes out through the nose. So just being with that and make the movement smaller. The jaw opens, you breathe in through the nose. The jaw closes, you breathe out through the nose. The tongue stays on the roof of the mouth. The lips stay closed with a very light seal. And now, turning that round. So rather than the focus being on the jaw, you change the emphasis. Be aware of the breath coming in through your nose. And as the breath comes in, the jaw gently opens. Then as the breath comes out, the jaw gently closes. And notice how that takes the pressure away from the jaw. It becomes much more relaxed when you have the emphasis on the breath. So as you're breathing in, the jaw gently opening, the lips still have this very natural light seal, the tongue has a very natural light seal. Then as you breathe out, the jaw naturally closes. And notice there's a lot of people already closing their eyes and going into an altered state. Notice you start feeling very relaxed and it's hard to keep your eyes open. You're drifting into a different state. 
as you breathe in, the jaw naturally opens with it. As you breathe out, the jaw naturally closes. And smaller, slower motion of the jaw, the lips stay relaxed and closed, the tongue stays on the roof of the mouth. Relax the back of the neck relax the back of the head. Notice it gets harder and harder to actually do it and keep the eyes open because you're drifting into a different state of consciousness. And it's good to relax the back of the neck and back of the head because a lot of the energy is coming through there. Now letting the eyes close. And let If you want, let the eyes close. Just naturally being with that. As you breathe in, the jaw gently opening. As you breathe out, the jaw gently closing. Notice how natural that feels. You get these waves of energy, waves of relaxation moving through your body. Very soft, relaxed seal in the lips, very soft, relax seal in the tongue. It's the upper surface of the tongue on the roof of the mouth. The tip of the tongue is close to or touching the front teeth. Maybe half an inch or an inch of the tongue on the roof of the mouth. The more you do, the more of the tongue naturally starts covering the roof of the mouth. But to start off with whatever feels most comfortable. Notice you go into this place that's halfway between being awake and being asleep. It's a very, it's like the dream state. It's a very shamanistic space. It feels very natural. Relax the throat. As you breathe in, chest is opening, the jaw is opening. As you breathe out, the chest is closing, the jaw is closing. As you breathe in, the abdomen is opening, the jaw is opening. As you breathe out, the abdomen is closing, the jaw is closing. You may be able to feel it right down into the pelvis. So breathing in, the pelvis is opening, the jaw opening. As you breathe out, the pelvis closing, the jaw closing. But also notice in a very subtle way, the whole face has started to breathe. This gentle motion of the jaw connects through every cell, through every part of us, and it especially connects up through the face, through the brain, through the cranium, through the neck, through the throat, connects it to the rest of the body. And this whole area that wasn't really breathing so much before, in a very subtle way, starts to open and close with the breath. And it's not a, a physical thing you're aiming for, it's very subtle. The more subtle, you do it, the stronger, more profound the experience is. And as the jaw closes, it's okay for the teeth to touch, but they just float together. They just, there's no pressure. They're not resting and pressing together. They may just bounce around gently, touching a tiny bit. Or the jaw can just be slightly separate as you breathe out. Breathing in, the jaw gently opens with the breath. Breathing out, the jaw relaxes closed. It relaxes open and it relaxes closed. And you drop into a deep, shamanistic, alternative, space, a channel, but it's your own channel, it's you, your energies connecting with the earth, connecting with the higher self, which are reflections of you, very 
resourcing, resourceful, very nutritious on all levels. Okay. And gently allowing yourself to come back. 